Now there's a lot, we're cutting, we're cutting a lot of air here, so I'm going to get the speed up. Hey y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to turn a fun little project, a multi-axis little, little birdie. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start off with a piece of wood about two inches by two inches square and about four and a quarter inches long and we're, we've got it between centers and we're going to go ahead and round that off. Once we turn it round, I'm going to go ahead and put a tenon on it. When you use a parting tool, go directly in first till you shear the fibers and then drop the handle for the, for the cut. And it doesn't need to be too terribly long. I want this about a quarter of an inch with a nice clean shoulder and we've got it. I've still got a little more rounding to do, but I want to go ahead and put that tenon on it before I got it so round it might not fit in my chuck. Let's finish rounding it. We'll go ahead and put this in the chuck. Okay, that's running true. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark, uh, we're going to make the head, uh, turn a big bead on the head about one and three eighths inches in diameter. So I'm going to go ahead and measure one and three eighths. And mark that. Because that's where we're going to put a parting cut. Mark that. Actually, we're just going to go ahead and use a skew, make a big V cut, and get this a little higher. Skew does a V cut better than any other tool. You don't get confident doing anything else with a skew. Learn to make a V cut. Now, here's the bevel always push the bevel in the direction that you're cutting. So in this case, I'm coming in at a slight angle, so I've got the skew coming in at a slight angle, riding that bevel. Now I'm going to do a peeling cut. This is a very aggressive cut, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up a little tailstock support. decimating. Let's see. Well, I got pretty close. Okay. So now we'll go back in a little more of the V. <coughs> I think that'll do it. peanut caught in my throat. It's not dust. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and round over the top. So we're going to start in the middle, just turn a bead. First, we're going to take away the end. Again, this is the bevel. Push the bevel in the direction you're going to cut. Since it's a big bead, when we finish, look at the angle of the handle. Keep in mind where it's going to start and where it's going to finish and, and uh, set your feet appropriately. And I'm going to lay it on top and roll it over, lift the handle, and swing the handle around. Being careful not to cut into the live center. Now a little more on the corner here. And now let's start on this side. Now I'm, I'm switching to a detailed gouge that has a sharper point, a little easier to get in there and go deep. Trying to minimize my tool marks makes sanding a little easier. Okay, go ahead and pull this away. Remove the live center. Now 
I've got to get rid of this. I've got to round it over and get rid of just that little bit of damage from the live center. Again, we'll use that uh, spindle guide. And the height of the tool rest is really depends on the size of the tool and, and where you stand. But the idea is we want to cut on center. Again, that, that bevel, when we finish, is going to come around like this with that angle, so move it appropriately. Okay. And we've got a fairly round head for that bird. Now it's time to shape the body. Now this, and in this instance, the body is going to be a little bit uh, longer than it is uh, thick. So let's go ahead and measure how round it is and make it just a little bit longer. How much? I don't know. Really, it depends on how much wood I've got here, frankly. So I'm going to move it out to about, I think about there. So about where the parting cut is going to wind up uh, removing it. Now let's start shaping the body, same way, it's a big bead. take a parting tool and go ahead and mark being real careful not to get this into your chuck jaws for novice uh, tool turners some things that look pretty simple they really are but you got to be careful not to be careless with slinging the tool around so you don't get it jammed in the jaws I've anchored my finger under the tool rest so I'm just going to take a nice little marking cut here and I'm going to come back a little bit That gives me a target to shoot for now that I got a little room to aim it. Be careful with the cuts, you don't come flying off into the jaw, so you've got to anchor that tool with your thumb. that's probably not a bad shape right there that I've got. Now before we go any further we've got to go ahead and uh, sand this thing because we've only got one choice. A little bit of tool mark here. So I'll sand it off camera. Okay now I've got it sanded now I'm, I'm going to tilt it in the chuck jaws uh, this is our multi-axis cut, but first thing I do is I look at the grain pattern and, de and decide here's the flat grain or the uh, side grain and here's the side grain. Do I want those on the side or do I want them on the front? And I think I'm going to put them on the front. So I orient this. This is going to be the front of the bird's head. So I'm going to uh, adjust the chuck. Actually, this is going to be the back of his head. I'm going to... Uh, push this down a little bit and loosen the jaws enough and just cock it where you still have wood touching here and you still have the jaws touching the wood here and here so you don't have to do it a lot matter of fact that might even be a little extreme let me back it off just a hair okay so you can kind of see what that axis looks like and then tighten it pretty good you don't have to get crazy but tighten it pretty good, but it is going to be throwing this thing around a little bit. Now, I'm going to change the shape of the body. I'm not going to change the shape of the head, so I'm going to line the, pair, uh, line the, uh, the tool rest up of the body, but make sure I'm not going to bump anywhere. So make sure you get some clearance. And somewhere along, just from about the top half of the body, I'm going to start reshaping this bead based on this multi-axis. 
and I'm going to slow the lathe down and take it kind of easy. See where it's going. One other thing, just normally spindle work, I wear just uh, eye uh, goggles, but because of the the nature of this spindle work, unsupported on one end, I'm going to go ahead and put on the face shield. Now there's a lot we're cutting. We're cutting a lot of air here, so I'm going to get the speed up. This is not that heavy to throw my lathe off. Smaller lathes, you might have to uh, go a little slower. check our progress and not bad I've taken a little bit off the back or actually off the off the front we got a little bit on the back here and that's about all I want all I want all I got to do now is get that cut a little cleaner here take off just a little bit here along the edge just a little bit and then sand it in so because of that detail Again, I'm going to get, get with my detail gouge so I can get in there a little bit closer without the wings uh, cutting into the, the head. I think I can live with that. Okay, so we're going to hand sand that to clean, clean it up. So I'm going to uh, sand off the lathe. Okay, I think the thing, most important thing you need to understand in this operation is uh, safe clamping of, of this. Don't ever try to do this with just free hands because an aggressive blade, this is three teeth per inch, if I used more teeth per inch on a, on a blade it would be less aggressive but I'm not going to change the blade just for this one cut. I'm just going to secure it very carefully so the, the uh, blank is supported against the table and secured here. Now this is going to be the front of the bird so we wanted him tilted forward a little bit so the cut's going to end here in the front but start a little bit further in the back just so we get a slight a, light, a slight angle and I'm just going to roughly draw that shape in so I'm going to line this up and make a straight cut from here I'm lining it up with a slot in the table saw so it's not a very pronounced uh, angle but just a little bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and take that cut. And we can smooth that bottom up if we need to on the uh, uh, on, a, on a belt sander. We'll go ahead and sign it, uh, then we'll worry about putting a face on it. Okay, I found this tiny little scrap of Macassar ebony, which is just a beautiful little piece of wood with a two, two colors, so I'll be able to lay a color of this on top of the beak. Uh, so I'm going to round it off just a little bit so it'll fit in my small chuck jaws. knocking the edges off. I'm afraid if I get any smaller it won't, uh, my jaws won't hold it. Okay, so I'm going to uh, bring this down to uh, just a hair over a quarter of an inch, round off the, uh, the end for the nose, and then bring the uh, tape of the back end just a little bit so when it, we, it goes in the quarter inch hole it'll fit well.
I'm making a little bit of a notch here, so if I come back in this direction and accidentally slip, it's more liable to catch the wood than going to my, my chuck jaw. I'm going to find this uh, little quarter inch set of jaws so I can size it with. So I can kind of eyeball see where I'm going. Okay, there's the beak I'm looking for, not too sharp, kind of blunt. Now all I need to do is start sizing it back a little bit. Okay, I've sanded this to 600. I'm going to put just a touch of u Triple E to polish it. I'm not going to really put any finish on this. This, this Macassar Ebony uh, just sands, polishes up so nice. Alright, so we've got a beak and it tapers just a little bit, so it's a quarter inch, tapers a little bit further back so it'll work into the hole. Now all we got to do is uh, take this off with a narrow parting tool. Okay, for the tail I found a piece of uh, a half inch, or five eighths inch scrap of walnut which I'm going to use. Uh, because it was uh, uh, fairly square, I went ahead and put it uh, directly into these small chuck jaws. We're going to go ahead and turn this thing around. size of the tail, uh, diameter, 3 8 is fine. I thought I'd make this one a little bigger since this piece is bigger. I'm going to go ahead and make it, uh, I think, a half inch. Yep. Let me take it down just a hair more. We're going to mark it. something like that. It'll stick out about that far. We'll have this about this much to go into the hole. Maybe a little less. deep into the hole, half inch and then it'll stop. We're going to go ahead and uh, sand this and then I'm going to cut it off with a flush cut saw at, a, at an angle. Now we're going to take a flush cut saw and cut this at approximately a 45 degree angle. Okay, now we've got the tail feathers. Okay, you can see I already started drilling. I forgot to turn the camera on, but uh, basically I held it in my hand using a quarter inch uh, bit that I marked a hole with a uh, starting hole with a, my bird cage awl and come in at about a 45 degree angle. Before I blew out the bottom, I stopped and then I took my tail feathers and took it to the uh, sander and sand it back a little bit so I get a nice snug fit as it enters the hole. 
and I haven't decided whether I want to orient it like this or like this but I'll decide that later I've gone ahead and drilled a hole here just a little bit below middle for the face um, it fits his beak and I like that. that that fits in snug now the only thing I've got left is to mark the two eyes so I'm going to carefully mark the eyes and drill two small uh, probably I may just I may just use a bird cage all for that. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Yeah, I think that'll work. Now get the next one. This is actually easier than using a electric uh, an electric drill. These are handy. Uh, if you haven't made one, you might want to go back and look at my video on making awls because they're handy to have these four-sided awls because they will drill a hole that a round one won't. So, there we've got it. There's our little little birdie. Uh, if you might have noticed, I, I did get the cut backwards. This should have been the back and that should have been the front. Uh, don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference. It's something just to play with. Here's a couple of other little birds you might look at little kiwi and, and I guess a goose. Uh, these are not off, off axis. I cut this off at an angle. Uh, well actually I just pushed that against the bandsaw so he, uh, I mean on the, uh, the sander, bell sander, so he'd be tilted down just a little bit. Make a longer beak. Uh, similar eyes. In this case I use different kinds of eyes. I use puff paint. Uh, I'm just experimenting to, uh, on eyes to, so I can put three beads together to show you. The bottom one is puff paint. It's got just a little bit of texture. In case you don't know what puff paint is, it looks like this. You can pick it up at Hobby Lobby or, or Michaels. It's a texture paint, primarily for t-shirts, but I've had this for about eight years. Uh, never used it up. Uh, drilled holes for these eyes. And this one, these eyes, little spaceman looking eyes, I drill with a quarter inch Forstner bit. Uh, you might try that, uh, see if you like it. Uh, you might try to make these other guys. So, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, click on the thumbs up button so other other wood turners can find this a little more easily. Bye.